Greetings, survivors. I was interested in the electric update of Night of the Dead. Uh, they have some very interesting things in it. Um, they don't have everything you can find on, say, 7 Days to Die, like motion sensors, but they have enough things. They have a lot of things that you cannot find there. And one thing that I found particularly interesting is that they have these gates here. Now, what is interesting about these gates is that with these gates, you can, you can make a computer. You can make a counter, for example, uh, that tells you how many times a trap was activated. Well, how many times a zombie activated a, a pressure plate, for example. So you can count the number of zombies uh, entering your base, though as long as stay activated, it won't really work. Uh, you would have to teach the zombies to step on the plate one at a time. But there is a lot of things interesting you can do with, with this thing. And this is an example here. Uh, these four gates here, they represent um, a memory. Now, as you know, computers work with zeros and ones. So this memory is either zero or one. It's one bit. And you have these lights here to represent the state of the bit. So if the bit is zero, this light is on. If the bit is on one, this light is on. Or you could say that if this light is on, then it's one. If this light is off, then it's zero. But regardless, um, you can set that light, set the bit with these things here. So this sets it to zero. It's already zero. Doesn't matter if I step on it. And this sets it to one. So I can step on it. Wait a second. And there it is. Now it's one. Okay. Leave the pressure plate and it stays on. Go back to the pressure plate. Still on. Um, come to here. And then... Wait a second. And there it is. It's now zero again. Now, this might remind you of something. So inconvenient. It might remind you of this. A switch. So you turn the switch on, and it remembers that it's on. And you turn the switch off, and it remembers that it's off. Then it's going to stay off, right? So you can't connect the switch to the light. You turn it on, it's going to be on. Turn it off, it's going to be off. But this thing here is powered by electricity. I happen to be stepping on these things here to turn it on and off, but all it is is a wire. One wire here would turn it to one, and one wire here it turn it to zero. So you can create things that will use, um, that can store a memory of a state, 0 or 1, and set that memory to 0 or 1 just using electricity. You don't need to go and turn the switch, right? For example, you could have a counter. Um, you could have a counter of how many times someone stepped on a uh, step on a pressure plate. Now, of course, this would not be a counter. It would have to be something much bigger. Um, to begin with, you will need four of these for each digit and the number of times you're, you're counting. So 
if you had four times eight, if you have 32 of these switches, then you would be able to count from zero to 255. And of course, it's not enough to have just this simple circuit here. You would have to have a, a different circuit that would increment the counter and decrement the counter. And that's a whole other circuits uh, that would need to be added to make the counter work. But the fact is, you can do that. You can actually create a computer that affects a program which you can write by stepping on pressure plates or using switches and then have that computer run the program. Now, if you saw how slowly it takes to change the state of a bit, it will not be exactly the fastest computer on Earth. <laughs> but still, it's pretty fun. I'm pretty interested that this option is available at all. And it actually works. Um, there's a lot of interesting things in how they did electricity. Um, like, they have blocks with multiple inputs and one output. Like, the battery can be charged by multiple inputs. Um, the electric power controller, which selects what kind of uh, uh, enemy or non-enemy will be targeted. It can also accept power from multiple places. And of course, you have the switches. The switches have the gates have two inputs. And then you have these guys here, which have one input and multiple outputs. So if you want like a switch, like this one, to control whether all your traps are on or off, you can connect it to, to this guy here, which is the battery eliminator circuit, and then connect your traps from here. Uh, this works similarly, though of course this has only one output. Um, pretty much everything has at least one output and one, one input and one output. Um, this, the generators have only output, but otherwise I think everything else is one input and one output. So you can change the traps instead of using this thing here. But then it means that if one of the traps breaks, the traps after it won't be activated. Um, this here is something that is great because it allows you to target traps at different zombies. And if you use trebuchets in previous versions of the game, you might have waited by the trebuchet to load the trebuchet until the tough zombies showed up, until the last stage of the Horde Knight, something like that. Um, now you can control it with electricity or maybe even with a computer. But anyway, um, this is very interesting. Um, I'm excited to see what people will create with this. But that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching.